Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. My name is Todd. It was late at night when I was studying for my math exam under the covers of my blanket. Suddenly, my blanket took flight as my angry father yanked it off me and my bed. My father snarled. What do you think you're doing? He snatched the book from my grasp. I'm going to burn this like the rest of them. Please leave him alone! My mother stood at the door pleading with him. You promised me you would let Todd finish high school. My dad said what he always said. Yes, I allowed him because I promised you. But I won't let Todd graduate with a high grade point average. Then he'll want to go to college. I was valedictorian at Harvard University, the best college in the world. And where did it get me? Nowhere. College is a waste of time. My dad graduated from Harvard University. Strangely, he hated academic success. Despite this, his diploma was hanging on our wall, where everyone could see it. When people came to visit us, he would always show it to them and make a point of telling them. I graduated from the best college in the world as the valedictorian of my class. It means nothing. It took me years to figure out that going to college was a waste of my time. I could have been a successful businessman if I had just gotten a job instead of going to college. Now I'm an accountant who makes peanuts. I regret ever going. I couldn't wait to turn 18. I was determined to leave home and go to a university. Unfortunately, I needed money if I wanted to go to a good one. Even if I were to get a job now, there'd be no way to save enough money in such a short time. One day, opportunity knocked on my door. I was going to ask something from my mom. She was in her bedroom, watching TV. I don't watch television. I've never been interested despite my parents offering to get one for my room. I love this game show, mom said. If this contestant answers this question correctly, she'll win $100,000. Intrigued, I asked. $100,000? What's the show called? I'm surprised you've never heard of it, mom replied. It's a famous game show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You move up in the game as you answer questions and keep making money. Contestants who make it to the final question win a million dollars. Of course, the questions get more difficult as the show progresses. I sat next to her and read the question on screen. Which is the smallest country in the world? Vatican City, I said without looking at the choices. The other choices were Monaco, Tuvalu, and San Marino. My mom looked at me and said, I think it's Monaco. The contestant on TV also said Monaco, but the host declared Vatican City as the correct answer. Way to go, Todd! If you had been up there, you would have won $100,000, my mom said excitedly. When I returned to my room, I googled all the million-dollar questions from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? They were all tough, but I knew some of the answers. Maybe this could be how I'd make enough money for university. I decided to apply and become a contestant. Four months passed with no news from the game show. I still hoped I could get a call back, so I began studying. I went to the library every day to read about different subjects and visited Wikipedia pages to read random articles. One day, my phone rang. Hi, I'm calling you from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The voice on the other end said. We're inviting you to the studio as a contestant. Since you're not of legal age, your parents need to sign a release stating they've consented to your participation. My heart sank. I was sure my dad would be against it, so I couldn't muster the courage to tell them about it until the very last day. On the day of the taping, I woke up in excitement and fear. I told them about the show at breakfast and asked them to sign the release. My dad refused, just like I expected. His excuses didn't make sense. What if you get eliminated in the first round? He complained. I can't let you go on TV and embarrass our family. Will you please just sign it? Mom scolded. Todd is a brilliant kid. I'm sure he'll make us proud. Dad seethed in a fury. He takes after you. If he had my genes, Todd would make the smart choice and listen to what I say. I don't want him going on some game show. We will not be discussing this again. Now, I need to get dressed and go to work. With that, he stormed out of the kitchen. Hand me the release, my mom commanded. If your dad won't sign it, I'll sign it for both of us. Even better, I'll come with you to the taping. But I need to do something first. She calmly walked to their bedroom door, put the key in the lock, and turned it. Inside, my dad was getting dressed. When he heard the lock turn, he shouted, What's going on? Todd is doing that game show, and I'm going with him, she screamed. You won't be able to stop him. He's going to do amazing. You've got a perfectly good TV in the bedroom, so you're going to watch and let Todd prove it to you. 
And by the way, you're out of here once we get home. When we arrived at the studio, my knees were weak and shaky. I stood in line as the fourth contestant, waiting nervously for my turn backstage. As contestants were supposed to sit in the chair across from the host, the game ends if you can't answer a question or decide to leave with the money you've already won instead of moving forward to the next round. Once a contestant is eliminated, a new contestant takes a seat in front of the host. The first two contestants before me left the game only after a couple of questions. The third contestant kept going until the ninth question, but they answered the $150,000 question wrong. It was finally my turn. My heart was pounding as I sat in the chair in front of the host. The first few questions were pretty straightforward. The host read the questions and the four answers. I replied in the first second, even though I had 15 seconds to think. The host was impressed and said, You know a lot for your age. There were 15 questions in total. The final question was worth a million dollars. When the host read the seventh question, I got nervous because I didn't know the answer. In what year was the first iPhone released? The host asked. The choices were the year 2000, 2004, 2007, and 2009. Each contestant was given three lifelines. The first was called 50-50, which eliminated two of the wrong choices on screen. The second lifeline was Ask the Audience, and they would ask the question to the people in the studio. The third one was called Phone a Friend. For this lifeline, I'd call someone I trusted and ask them for the answer. I used the 50-50 lifeline for the iPhone question. That way, I was left with the choices of the year 2000 and 2007. I thought, iPhone technology wasn't that old. So I said, 2007. When the host asked, is that your final answer? My voice began shaking. Yes, I said. It was correct, and I won $50,000. My mom was sitting in the studio audience clapping for me. I could only wonder if my dad was watching the show at home from the bedroom. I pictured him getting angrier every time I answered correctly. Despite my dad's worst efforts, I'd been reading books for years. It wasn't hard for me to come up with each answer, including the twelfth question. The host was surprised when I promptly answered, Which is the deepest lake in the world? It was Lake Baikal. We have a strong candidate for the million dollar prize tonight, the host cheered. I breezed through questions 13 and 14, finally reaching the last question, the million dollar question. I looked at my mom. She was smiling, tears of joy streaming down her face. Even if I failed to answer this question correctly, I was happy knowing she was proud of me. The host started reading the million dollar question. Which Ivy League university does not have a valedictorian title? Then he read the choices. A. Harvard University B. Columbia University C. Princeton University D. Dartmouth College I was surprised when I heard the question. My dad was in for a shock. You'll find out why in just a moment. I told the host that I would use a lifeline to call my father. My dad picked up but couldn't speak because he was crying. Hello? I said. After a few choked sobs, his answer came. I'm watching the show, Todd. I see the question. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer. I'm sorry, son. I lied to you and your mom. I wasn't the valedictorian of my class at Harvard. That diploma hanging on the wall is fake. I didn't even finish high school. I was trying to stop you from going to college because I was jealous. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I gave him a cold reply. Dad, as I was preparing for the show, I learned that there were no valedictorians at Harvard <gasps> University. I knew you had been lying to us. That's why I called you. I had plans to tell you that I knew your diploma was fake as I left for college, but then I found an even better opportunity. The opportunity to hear you confess in front of millions of people, just as I figured you would. I hope you've learned a valuable lesson, I said. <laughs> then I turned to the host and said, The correct answer is Harvard University. All other universities among the choices have valedictorians, except for Harvard. The studio broke into applause. Not only had I won a million dollars, but I had also made my father come clean on national TV. When we got home, my mother unlocked the bedroom door and walked my dad out to speak with us. He apologized to me and my mom again and again. My mom took the Harvard diploma hanging from the wall and handed it to him scornfully. Take your fake diploma and get out of our house. You're no longer welcome here, she said. 
My father left that day. I didn't give him any of my winnings. Right now, I only have one goal, to finish at a good college and put my actual diploma where my dad's fake one used to hang.